So tonight we're having a party to launch our new book, Sex, Knowledge and the Receptions of the Past, which has just come out. And it's an opportunity for us to invite lots of friends and colleagues from across the university and beyond, including some of the book's contributors, and also many people who we're hoping to be working with in the future on our new venture, which is being launched with this book, um, which is the Sexual Knowledge Unit at the University of Exeter. The front cover of the book is a perfect encapsulation of the main themes. It shows some Victorian ladies running away from the Sir Abbas giant in Dorset who has come to life and is chasing them. In it, she depicts both the ways in which the Victorians were fascinated by the sexual history of their own past, the ancient Britons, but equally, it's a play on our own fascination with the Victorians and what they made of sex. So a number of years ago, when Kate and I first set up the Sexual Knowledge Sexual History Project at Exeter University, what we wanted to do was find all those people who we knew must be working around the world in all kinds of different disciplines, looking at the way that the past was used in thinking about sex. And so first we had a conference, and then we found other ways of networking and bringing all those people out of the woodwork. And finally, we've produced a volume which has contributions from scholars from all sorts of different disciplines within the humanities, including history and classics, but also English, modern languages, anthropology, archaeology. So we've got a genuinely interdisciplinary book. So this book offers us a history of how sex has been thought about and understood over the centuries. It's about how people have used the past and used ideas and material from the past in order to authenticate um, and illustrate and support the kind of ideas that they've articulated about sex. And really it shows the power of history in our thinking about sex. In many ways too, the book is an engagement uh, with queer theory and some of the challenges that that poses into thinking about what the past is for, what it means and what we want from it. And we seek to do that in a way that acknowledges the power of queer theory without taking away from the continued importance and relevance of history. In many ways the book uh, draws inspiration from and uh, comes out of the exciting developments in the field of classical reception studies and it seeks to bring together those methodologies, bring those methodologies into dialogue with other disciplines.